Hi guys, my name is Maria Paula. I'm the Managing Director of the Coloured Cube. Um, I started my career as a visual artist. I was a commercial painter for 10 years, um, trying to both generate income and trying to make it as an artist. Um, and then I went on to being a curator and then opening the Coloured Cube. And the Coloured Cube does a range of projects, working with artists, working with creatives, um, really trying to break these silos within the creative sector of how we work and who we work with. Today I'm going to be speaking to you about um, project management. It's very, going to be very related to the visual artists and that is my background so I really understand where you're coming from. But also challenging you to kind of break open a little bit out of the predictability of what you think uh, project management and an artist, the road that an artist should follow. Um, at the end of the day, a visual artist should be very creative, very innovative, and you should be challenging the status quo of the society and the global context that we live in to creating the new world that we want to be a part of, and not just taking on what you're told and predictably following the suit, because that leads to invisibility. So let's go, let's get, let's get going. Um, it's going to be about project management. The big thing about project management is if you don't have an idea of why you're doing project management, you're never going to get there. Project management is not the point. Project management is the journey to the point. It's like going on holiday and just staying on the boat if you don't have a destination. You've got to know where you want to go. The best project managers, in my experience, are ones that have a sense of the deeper reason why they want to do what they want to do, so that while they're working through their plans and their project management, they, they're willing to be flexible and change, change what happens on the ground according to who they're working with because they have a sense of what the intention is in the output at the end of the journey. I'm going to be going through six steps, which I think are really important. Um, they're not all the steps. The details are easy. The details you can learn. Uh, one of my biggest... Um, points that I'm going to try to get across to you is just go out there and do it. Project management isn't something that exists on paper, it's something that exists through practice, through learning yourself, through learning your intentions and learning what kind of mark you want to make in your career, in your life. So get out there and just try. Okay, so, okay, so before the step number one, I'm just going to reiterate, project management will not make your project successful. What will make your project successful is a deeper reason of why you want to fulfill that project. Have an idea of why, have a big picture, have a dream, have a goal, and your projects, all of your projects are leading up to that. The project management is just the steps to there. So step number one, why are you having an exhibition? We'll keep it with exhibition, but it can move larger than just exhibitions. Why are you having an exhibition and who's your target audience? There are lots of reasons to have an exhibition. Um, selling your artwork is not the only reason. Sometimes it's also just learning what it means to curate, what it means to set up works. Having a sense of why you're doing an exhibition will help you navigate where you'll have it, who your audiences are, how you're going to do your exhibition. I had my first solo exhibition at the Springs Art Gallery. Um, I didn't get the big names of the galleries to come and have a look at my exhibition, but I did have a lot of family and friends and Tabo Sequela from Springs Art Gallery supporting me and showing me what works and what doesn't work. So have a sense of why you're doing your exhibition. Step number two, where will you have your exhibition? There are lots of, there are lots of options of locations for exhibitions. Um, if you're trying to appeal to a buying audience um, who live in wealthier suburbs, having your exhibition in the centre of the city in quite a daring space might not appeal to them and they might not come. And you might choose to have a much more um, safe, traditional exhibition if your intention is to sell to a wealthier audience. If your intention is to speak on a concept, to push an idea, to push um, a heartbeat that's happening in the city of Joburg, then you, would, you may have your exhibition in an old, run-down building in Johannesburg and appealing to your colleagues and to your, um, the academics of the sector. So knowing the audience really is important for where you have your exhibition. If you approach a gallery or a, a more generic space for an exhibition, they will have rules and you'll have to follow and abide by those rules. They'll have rules about how you can hang, how you can perform, what you can do in your space. So be aware that not all spaces are the same and where you choose to do your exhibition 
say something about the contents of the exhibition before the show has even started. Step number three. This is one of my most important steps and I wish more creatives would take this on. Step out of tradition, step into the 21st century, challenge the status quo, ruffle people's feathers, don't do things how it's expected to be done. If you fail, so what? Pick up, try it again. But don't think that because artists and visual artists specifically follow the tradition of the white cube, that that is what you're limited to. You're not limited to that. You're a creative, you're an artist. Push your own personal boundaries related to what you think and what you feel. Not enough artists are doing this in South Africa and in Josie, and I wish more of you would do that. Challenge the status quo. Really, get together as artists, question how art is presented, who is buying art, how could you change that, how could you increase the market. Don't just accept the way it is as fact. Step number four, how will you pay for your exhibition? This again is a very broad concept. Uh, my first exhibition I had no cash, and the way that I paid for it was that I made connections. Springs Art Gallery let me exhibit there for free. I contacted the local spa, asked them to support me with some food. I contacted a local liquor, liquor store in Springs and they gave me some, a few drinks. And then I had friends and family who came and also supported. The, the beauty of in-kind support is that you realize the network that you have that you may not have, have anticipated before. In, the exhibition, in my exhibition, I went to Tabo and I said I'd love to have some live music. I had three different bands playing at my opening. One, a beautiful violinist who wanted to show his skills. Another was a band. And that really, um, it really allowed for a very cool rhythm and a really cool approach to the exhibition. I did sell some works. I sold about six works, but it was mainly to friends and family and my works were very, very cheap. Um, so, you know, it depends on your dynamic. If you want, if you need funding and you, you want to go the route of funding, you need to speak to a funder that relates to what your deeper cause or your deeper intention is with your exhibition. Don't just do generic funding. Think and spend time finding the right funder who links to your concept or your intention with your artworks. On the slide, you'll see a budget breakdown. This is also very generic. It's just a sense of the costs that are involved. From the beginning of the Coloured Cube, I have always um, been very adamant that you must get paid. As the curator, as the project manager, if you can't get a little bit of cash and food on your plate, you're never going to be able to do another one and another one and another one. You don't have to be greedy, you don't have to be out there, but acknowledge that you need a little bit of cash too. <laughs> Step number five, how are you going to reach your target audience? Lots of people forget with exhibitions that you are appealing to people's home time, people's entertainment time. You're falling into the category of people doing something because they want to. How are you going to engage with that audience? What is going to happen when they come to your exhibition? What's going to happen if you have an exhibition on for three weeks or four weeks? What happens at that space? Is it just this dead white cube with no music, that's stiff, that's elitist? Or have you really challenged that and played with your space? Um, I wish more of you did do that. Like, what is your space and how do you want your audience to feel when they come into your space? So the first step to that is to realize who your target audience is and then how are you going to reach that target audience? Um, social media is obviously the first route and creating an events page and connecting with your friends and colleagues and family. But why not go a bit bigger and find um, more contemporary methods of engaging. We live in the 21st century that people want to be part of the dialogue. Why not step onto the streets? Why not do a performance? Um, why, why not find new ways of reaching an audience that isn't the generic, static invitation, hoping that five people come, drinking on cheap white wine? Like, all of that is up for debate, is up for discussion. Um, so, as you start your visual arts journey, strongly realize that the rules are the rules only until those rules are changed and you have the power to change that. So step number five is how do you reach your target audience? Where is your target audience? Um, and how could you create something that people are like, gee, I really want to see what's going on with that exhibition. Step number six, your exhibition opening. 
The opening is often, um, your, your exhibition opening is often the time people come to network with each other, it's entertaining, there's often speeches. It's not always the space where you will sell your works, it's the space where you celebrate the works that are on exhibition. Whether they're yours or whether you're the curator on a group show, it's a, it's a time where everybody comes together in a, in a form of entertainment, in a form of um, an event. And what happens at that event? When people arrive, what happens with them? Is there music? Is there a live Twitter feed? Is there some interesting performance that happen that's happening? Have you considered the catering and the drinks, that there aren't little white cucumber sandwiches and they are more related to the content and the context of your exhibition? Everything with an exhibition can be immersive and experiential. Do they walk through something when they arrive? So really allow your creativity to leave your canvas sometimes and enter the spaces that you are project managing. The last step, step number seven. Your exhibition is over and it's been a great success and you did an amazing job and you sold out. Now you need to document it. There's a few reasons why you document your exhibition. If you have funding, you have to document it. You have to write a report, you have to have photographs and your funder will want that. If you have got in-kind support or you raised your own money and you don't have to speak back to a funder, your report serves as proof that you did that exhibition. So the next exhibition where you want to go bigger and bolder and you want, you've got a more daring idea, you've got proof that you have done something before. Um, a report shouldn't be too tedious, it shouldn't be long, it should be written in plain English. Speak about the numbers that came to your exhibition, what your intention was, what worked, what didn't work, and always, what was the budget, did you manage it, did you stay within the budget that you had allocated yourself. But keeping a, a, a report, I found that the coloured cube really is useful as leverage for your next client or your next funder. Okay, and then just um, some tips from me. I, I, am a, I come from a visual arts background. My intention was always I had a dream of being a painter, having a studio and selling my art. And as I got older and as the journey unraveled of the, the politics and the, the difficulties of the visual arts sector, I, I started, my path started opening up. And through doing projects that are bigger than me sitting in a studio painting, um, and projects that also engage with other creatives and other visual artists, I, I have found a, a level of creativity that I wasn't getting in just my own works. So don't be too tough on yourself. Allow yourself to learn, even if it's not directly linked to creating an artwork. Allow yourself to learn how to be creative in more ways than just the one, because it will influence your artworks and it will influence how people perceive you within the creative and art sector. There are so many opportunities in South Africa and Johannesburg for creatives who are bold enough and willing enough to make their mark in the sector. So um, don't be shy, don't be a mouse, take the ground, take the steps. The sector is wanting to support you, it's wanting to help you. Um, but you have to do the work in order to prove yourself to get there. So my final step or my final advice is don't procrastinate, stop thinking about it, get a group of friends together or creators together and just do it. If it fails, it'll be better the next time. If it doesn't fail, you'll learn what does work and you can make it, you can, it it's that the momentum has started. Don't treat your first exhibition or your first project as having to be absolutely perfect. Just get out there and give it a shot because the best way to learn with these things is through doing. So just get out there, do it, try, experiment, ask for advice, and you, you will see your path opening up in ways that you hadn't even considered. Good luck, and I hope to see your projects out in Josie and South Africa. Ciao.